In episode 4 of season 1 of HBO's The Gilded Age, we get a deeper look into the ambitious young writer Peggy Scott's character played by Danae Benton. In this episode, Peggy finds the vehicle for her voice by writing for the local black newspaper The New York Globe, as well as learning how to use her voice for political cause. As with so many of the characters in the show, you might be wondering if Peggy Scott was a real historical figure, so I did the research, and here is what I've found out so far. First off, Peggy is not based on one particular historical figure. The show writer, Julian Fellows has a penchant for combining historical figures, and the Los Angeles Times reports that Peggy Scott is inspired by a number of real black female trailblazers of the era. The LA Times article identifies three individuals who lend themselves to the fictional Peggy Scott including the writer and activist Ida B. Wells along with novelist Julia Collins who is often cited as the first published black American woman, and Susan McKinney Stewart, the first black female doctor in New York. In this video, I will focus on the life of Ida B. Wells, as I feel she is the most representative of what we have seen of the character of Peggy Scott so far in the series. Please let me know in the comments below whether you agree or not with my conclusion that Ida B. Wells is the real Peggy Scott. Ida Bell Wells was an early leader in the civil rights movement and an American investigative journalist. She was one of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People's Founders. Ida B. Wells undoubtedly became America's most recognized black woman during the course of her lifetime committed to battling racism and brutality, as well as the fight for African American equality and women's rights. Ida was born into slavery during the Civil War in Holly Springs, Mississippi on July 16, 1862, and was freed shortly thereafter by the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863. She was educated while enrolled in the historically black liberal arts college, Rust College in Holly Springs. But tragedy struck and when Ida was only 16 years old, both of her parents and an infant brother died of yellow fever. Ida suddenly found herself the head of her family. To keep her younger siblings together as a family, she found work as a teacher in a black elementary school in the country near Holly Springs. She also maintained her education, taught Sunday school, and cooked, washed, and ironed for the family. Three years later, Ida and her two younger sisters relocated 50 miles south to Memphis, Tennessee to live with their aunt and where Ida continued to teach. At age 21, despite her having bought a first-class ticket, Ida clashed with a white train conductor who ordered her to move from the ladies' car to a section designated for black passengers. In true fighting spirit, Ida fastened her teeth on the back of his hand in refusal when the conductor tried to forcibly move her. Ida sued after being ejected from the train and won the case though the decision was later reversed in court. You could say that this was the beginning of her political life. By the time Ida reached 25, she was the co-owner and editor of a local black newspaper called The Free Speech and Headlight. Here she began writing about racial inequality. Then came the people's grocery lynching on March 9, 1892 in Memphis. She denounced the white mob's actions in print, which began her untired traveling and reporting to uncover incidents of racial segregation and inequality across the country. In the 1890s, Ida published her documented reports on lynchings in articles and through her pamphlet entitled, Southern Horrors, Lynch Law in All Its Phases. Ida visited places where people had been hanged, shot, beaten, burned alive, drowned or mutilated. She examined photos of victims hanging from trees as mobs looked on, poured over local newspaper accounts, took sworn statements from eyewitnesses, and on occasion, even hired private investigators. Ida B. Wells exposed lynching as a barbaric practice of whites in the South, used to intimidate, 
and oppress African Americans who created economic and political competition and a subsequent threat of loss of power for whites. For her efforts, a white mob destroyed her newspaper office and presses as her investigative reporting was carried nationally in black-owned newspapers. Subjected to continued threats, Ida left Memphis for Chicago, where she married Ferdinand Barnett in 1895. Even as she had a family Ida continued her work by writing, speaking, and organizing for civil rights. The same year she was married Ida managed to publish The Red Record, a 100-page pamphlet with more detail, describing the abhorrent number of lynchings that had been occurring in the United States since the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863. She also took up the battle of the women's movement in the early 20th century. Her role in the U.S. suffrage movement was inextricably linked to her lifelong crusade against racism, violence, and discrimination towards African Americans. Like all suffragists, she believed in women's right to vote, but she also saw the basic right of voting as a way for black women to become politically involved in their communities and to use their votes to elect African Americans, regardless of gender, to influential political office. As an activist, Ida established several notable women's organizations and traveled nationally and internationally on lecture tours. Ida was outspoken regarding her beliefs as a black female activist and faced regular public disapproval, sometimes including from other leaders within the civil rights movement and the women's suffrage movement. Skip ahead to World War I where the U.S. government placed Ida under surveillance labeling her a dangerous race agitator. Nothing could ever stop this fierce and feisty woman. She defied the governmental threat and continued her activism and political writings until her death from kidney failure in Chicago at the age of 68 on March 25, 1931. She is buried in Oakwood Cemetery on Chicago's south side. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on the many fabulous fierce and feisty women in history.